tropical Puerto Rico, staging site for the largest peacetime exercise of its kind ever held. It's a joint Army Air Force endeavor called Big Slam Porto Pine. Cargo and troops from 14 onload stations in the United States are deployed to two sites in Puerto Rico, Ramey Air Force Base and Roosevelt Roads Naval Air Station. In the two-week exercise, 22,000 troops and over 11,000 tons of equipment will be hauled here and then back home by Matt's Strategic Airlift Force. The C-133 Cargo Master sees extensive use. Expert Matt's maintenance crews keep aircraft turnaround time to a minimum. While at the peak of the exercise, a plane lands every seven minutes. Unloading, loading, and ground handling of these cargo giants is accomplished by airmen with long experience in airlift operations. The cargo is outsized and varied, and is dispatched swiftly as if under actual wartime conditions. Big Slam Porto Pine has a twofold objective. For Mats to move from a peacetime aircraft utilization rate to an almost doubled wartime rate. For the Strategic Army Corps, a combat readiness test of its hard-hitting mobile strac units. The Transport Control Center is one of the basic elements required in such an exercise. Here, all arriving and departing aircraft are controlled and ramp services dispatched. So for two weeks in Puerto Rico, aircraft were landing, finding space on the busy ramps, being offloaded quickly, refueled, maintained, unloaded for the return trip, and taking off again in minimum time as Mats executes Big Slam Porto Pine. This curious device is called a clamshell imager. More simply, it's two parabolic mirrors which scientists at the Air Force Cambridge Research Center use as a furnace for testing various materials under intense heat. Here, a motion picture projection lamp is used as a heat source. The cigarette is inserted in the light's image. By using a carbon arc as a heat source, temperatures of 3,500 degrees centigrade, hot enough to melt a sapphire, can be produced. Here, a small globe is suspended in one hole of the imager, approximately 18 inches from the opposite opening. A pencil inserted in the image shows the three-dimensional effect of this optical phenomenon. Note how the image disappears as the camera moves to the side. Images apparently projected in midair. High temperatures easily produced for laboratory study. Research in unusual fields to gain new knowledge for the aerospace age. This is the work of scientists at the Air Force Cambridge Research Center. The United States Air Force Band with its conductor, Colonel George S. Howard, arrives in Japan during its 1960 tour of the Far East. These musical ambassadors of goodwill travel extensively and see a large part of the world as they foster good people-to-people -people relations wherever they visit. These youngsters in Kyoto, Japan's ancient capital and cultural center, make good photographic models for lens-happy musicians. Here's an unusual treat, a visit to a geisha training school in Kyoto. These are some of the only motion pictures ever taken of a geisha training class and our musical ambassadors enjoy the show. So much so that they return the honor with a dance of their own. During relaxation periods before a concert, the band members still are sharing experiences with new friends. Here, several of the hotel's maids get a beginning lesson in clarinet. Oh, come on now, let's give it another try. Hazukashi takusana, eh? 
now a visit to the Shochiku movie studios and a talk with some of Japan's leading actors, plus some sword play between a samurai and a terrible Scot. Japan, Taiwan, the Philippines. Our goodwill emissaries have pleased audiences with their friendly ways and musical excellence. Hats off to the men of the Air Force Band. Members of the Shaw Sumter Community Council hear Major General W.D. Hutchison in a brief talk before the group, which is dedicated to bolstering relations between Shaw Air Force Base and the people of Sumter. A casual mention of an upcoming campaign for funds for an Air Force Academy football stadium was all that was needed to spark a word of mouth campaign among Sumter businessmen. These Air Force minded citizens began spreading the word about how our nation's school of the sky needs a stadium for its fast-rising Falcon football team. A stadium which by law cannot be financed out of tax dollars, but must come from individual contributions from people interested in the Academy's gridiron future. It was just a day later when a committee of Sumter citizens paid a surprise visit to 9th Air Force Commander, General Hutchison. Little did the general realize that his casual mention of an upcoming fund drive would bring such swift results. Typical of the spirited support of Air Force activities by this South Carolina community are $1,500 in checks, symbolizing Sumter's esteem for the Falcons of the Air Force Academy. It looks like somebody dropped a quarter. It's a football, and a couple of gangs of toughies are beating each other up in a game called rugby. The teams are a Chinese all-star bunch from Taipei and a group of American servicemen and civilians stationed in Taiwan. The American team is known as the Outsiders, which is a translation from the Chinese Wai Guoyan, which means outside people. Of course, if you don't watch out, you'll be outside your shirt. Bloodthirsty chap, isn't he? The only time you quit running in this game is when the ball goes out of bounds. Then, while the crowd cheers, you stand still for a minute and then start all over again. Sometimes I get the impression that the ball is just too hot to handle. The outsiders win the contest nine to three. And in the spirit of good sportsmanship, cheer their Chinese opponents. A great time for all. The Able rocket is pushing into orbit a National Aeronautics and Space Administration weather reconnaissance satellite called the Tyros. Equipped with television cameras and orbiting about 450 miles from the Earth's surface, it can take pictures of the Earth's cloud cover and transmit them back to the Earth for weather analysis. Here are examples of the satellite's pictures. The Red Sea in the Middle East. The Gulf of Aqaba. And the Nile River. The camera's amazing clarity surprised even the most optimistic scientists. This is the Northeast United States and Canada, the Gulf of St. Lawrence, and a large area of cloud cover. Using a wide-angle lens while shooting almost straight down, this picture shows part of Lower California and the Gulf of California. 
Following Tyros came an Advanced Research Projects Administration shot of a prototype navigation satellite called Transit 1B. The booster, a Thor Abel Star. To find out about the Abel Star, we talked to Lieutenant Colonel Tom Morgan, who has worked with the Thor since 1957 at Cape Canaveral. Well, the Abel Star is a new configuration being developed by STL for the Air Force to be used on our ARPA shots. Now, we have fired one of this configuration already. Our last uh, Transit 1B was an Able Star configuration. In other words, this was a first. Yes, this was a first. Uh, and uh, it worked quite well. We're very happy with this, uh, with the performance on it. The power plant is essentially the same power plant, same thrust. However, we've increased the burning time uh, better than twice and we've incorporated a rather unique feature called a restart capability with this second stage. You mean you can turn it off and then start it again? Yes, in fact, we actually did this for the first time uh, in our last uh, Transit 1B launch operation. We fired the first stage uh, until we had achieved the proper velocity to coast up to our circular orbit, and then tilted the missile over after the coast period and injected it into orbit with a second burning period. Well, I understand that the uh, Transit 1B was a considerably heavier payload than was, say, Pioneer 5, for example. Yes, uh, it was, uh, almost by a factor of uh, three. Uh, the Pioneer 5 weighed approximately 90 pounds, and uh, the Transit 1B was about 270 pounds. However, you must realize that the weight is not uh, too important a consideration here. Uh, the weight is governed somewhat by the mission that you're trying to perform. In other words, uh, Transit 1B didn't have quite as far to go. No, it didn't. <laughs> Satellites of this type, equipped with powerful radio transmitters, will provide ships and planes with pinpoint navigational accuracy in bad weather. Commenting on the reliability of the Thor as a booster for space shots, Colonel Morgan said, We've actually launched about 16 of these multi-stage vehicles down here, and we can only attribute one failure to the Thor uh, vehicle in all of these uh, firings, which in this business is, is a little fantastic. As the Transit 1B rushes spaceward, it becomes the third successful satellite attempt by this nation in 33 days. The Air Force Thor, an operational strategic weapon, lends its power to this nation's conquest of space. <laughs>